Hi, these are the top 10 films of 1968. When I say top 10, I mean my personal favourite films of 1968. Cheers. In at number 10, Planet of the Apes. There is a lot to like in this original Apes movie, but this is a good film that becomes a great film with its twist. With that final shocking shot, it completely changes what the film is about, and it is a wonderful example of what is likely to come if we keep being terrible to each other. Not the smart talking apes bit, the nuclear war bit. In the number nine, Yellow Submarine. What a strange movie. Featuring the wonderful songs of the Beatles, this odd animation is incredibly trippy. It's inventive and quite mad. Funny, frightening, it's the perfect film for children or for people on drugs. In a number eight, if this film shows youth in revolt in a brilliantly inventive way. Taking place in a boarding school, you see a small group of rebellious, angry young men, led by Malcolm McDowell. They can't stand the oppressive structures, old-fashioned teachers, and the truly awful prefects. The film slips between reality and fantasy. It's a brilliant look at the changing attitudes in the 1960s, but also at youth and the anger that comes with it. It has nothing to do with the Rudyard Kipling poem, If, which the BBC rather cruelly made Roger Federer and Rafael Nadal read before a Wimbledon final, considering English isn't their first language. If you can think and not make thoughts your aim. In at number seven, Bullet. What a super cool film Bullet is. From Steve McQueen looking effortlessly cool in all his great clothes, to Lalo Schifrin's jazzy, very cool score, to the cool editing, the cool action, and the very, very cool car chase. There's only one word to sum up Bullet, and that is fun. In a number six, Stolen Kisses, carrying on the story of Antoine from the magnificent The 400 Blows, and the achingly funny and embarrassing short Antoine and Colette, John Pierre Leo continues to play the character to perfection. He's brilliantly awkward and realistic, we follow his love life and his many terrible attempts at jobs and careers. It has a very different tone to The 400 Blows. This being more of a comedy, and it is very funny. It's full of memorable characters and situations, and you just want to spend as much time with these people as possible. The character of Antoine is so well realised and formed that everything he does makes complete sense, but he still has the capability to surprise us. Stolen Kisses is a great standalone comedy, but it's also a wonderful sequel to one of the best films of all time. In number five, Night of the Living Dead. George A. Romero pretty much creates a genre here. One of the most influential films of all time, this is the first zombie film as we know them today. The Dead are rising, and we follow a group of strangers held up in a house fighting for survival. The tension between the characters is as exciting and as frightening as the monsters out to get them. It's so inventive and really terrifying. <coughs> Romero's zombie films were so good because they were so subversive and about the times in which they were made. America was involved in the Vietnam War at the time, and horrific images would appear on the news to families in their homes. And here, the horrors are not a world away. They are outside your front door. Our hero is an African-American and having him survive all of this only to be killed by a redneck gang means that Night of the Living Dead stays in your memory for many different reasons. They're coming to get you, Barbara. There have been many, 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 many zombie films since and very few of them live up to this classic. In a number four, Targets. This is such an odd film. A film about a mass shooter starring Boris Karloff as himself. Well, basically. Karloff owed two days work to the head of the studio, Roger Corman. So Corman told the young Peter Bogdanovich, make what you want, but use Boris for two days. What Bogdanovich does is absolutely astonishing, making a terrifying horror film that calls for gun control in America. We follow two stories. One is Karloff playing Byron Orlock, who is basically himself. An old actor known for horror pictures who is done with it all and has decided to retire. The other is that of Bobby Thompson, an all-American young man who goes off on a shooting spree. The stories are bound to meet, and when they do, it's brilliantly imaginative. It's a wonderful and frightening film. 
Quentin Tarantino loves the film. And I think you can see its influence in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. The combining of real life horror with a movie and Hollywood background. And also characters driving around Los Angeles listening to the radio. In a number three, Rosemary's Baby. Wow, what a good year for horror. Roman Polanski's first Hollywood film is one of his best. The second part of his amazing apartment trilogy. We follow Rosemary Woodhouse and her husband Guy. They move into a new place. But there's something a little bit off about the apartment building. Bad things keep happening to the tenants, and the strange old couple next door are very intrusive and nosy. When Rosemary does get pregnant, things take a dark turn. Mia Farrow is so good as the lead. Her paranoia, which is totally justified, makes her start to act crazy. But she isn't, and we know she isn't. But her performance is so convincing, we see how other people would ignore her concerns and just think that she was a bit mad. It's a really funny film as well, and there isn't a bad performance in it. It's one of the great horror films, and the ending is brilliant in so many ways. Rosemary's Baby is devilishly good. See what I did there? In at number two, Once Upon a Time in the West. Sergio Leone said he was done with the Western after he made The Good, The Bad and The Ugly, and thank God he came back to the genre. Once Upon a Time in the West is a marvellous, operatic film. It has this unusual slow pace with long build-ups with not much happening and very little talking. And then out of nowhere, sudden violence. <laughs> the cast is amazing. Charles Bronson is so cool as the harmonica playing man out for vengeance. Jason Robards is great as the bandit Cheyenne. Claudia Cardinale is wonderful as the woman all alone in a tough and brutal world. And Henry Fonda is perfect playing against type as the villain. The first time we see him, he's massacring a family and killing kids. Jesus. The film is stunning to look at and it has my favourite Ennio Morricone score, with each character getting a knockout theme of their own. Once Upon a Time in the West is a dance of death that completely hypnotises you. And in at number one, 2001 A Space Odyssey. Wow, what a film. Where to begin? This is filmmaking at its highest level. Starting with the dawn of man and ending with, well, it's best left a mystery, but unfortunately a Japanese interviewer got the meaning out of Kubrick in a very awkward phone interview in the 80s. Especially uh, travel, uh, super, uh, I'm sorry, uh, space travel 2001. Yeah. And, uh, but people are wondering that, uh, what is the meaning of last shame? This film has various different chapters, all of which are outstanding. The middle part of the film, with the battle between the very paranoid, very human HAL 9000 with the living men aboard the spaceship, is my personal favourite. Kubrick's choice of classical music is spot on, as it always is, and the cinematography is beautiful beyond belief. The special effects are groundbreaking and astonishing. The editing is remarkable. Cue the famous ape throwing a bone in the air and it turning into a spaceship clip. It's a long film, but when you think what it achieves and does, it's remarkable it's only 142 minutes long. That's five minutes shorter than Bad Boys 2. Some people say it's a cold and emotionless film. And yes, Bad Boys 2 is, but I don't think 2001 is. The emotion is brought out of the viewer. I get overcome with emotion when I watch it. You're taken on a visual and sensory ride like no other, questioning what it means to be human. Stanley Kubrick's only sci-fi film may be the best one ever made. He was a master, and when people try to copy him, it usually doesn't turn out too well, just like a children's orchestra trying to play Strauss. A Space Odyssey is one of the great movies. It is truly mind-blowing. So, counting down the top ten. In a number ten, Planet of the Apes. In a number nine, Yellow Submarine. In a number eight, Bullet. In a number seven, If. In a number six, Stolen Kisses. In a number five, 
Night of the Living Dead. In at number four, Targets. In at number three, Rosemary's Baby. In at number two, Once Upon a Time in the West. And in at number one, 2001 A Space Odyssey. Well, that was my top 10 films of 1968. What are your top films of 1968? Cheers.